the impression of the immediate denture patient or orthodontic patient utilizing Aquasil Ultra and the Strong Massage Denplant Impression Tray. The viscosities utilized will be rigid, either fast set or regular set, light viscosity, and extra light viscosity. As seen here, we have a dentate maxillary arch. The very first thing we do is to size the tray. We have three sizes, small, medium, and large. We take the tray and size it to the existing arch. If the tray doesn't fit exactly, we can actually heat shape the tray. As you see here, the tray is placed in, making sure that we have enough tray on both the labial, buccal, and lingual aspects of the teeth. If you have any binding of the tray when placement, take a micro torch with very rapid strokes, go over the specific area that you'd like to reshape. If it's in the posterior segment, take and heat shape the posterior area and then bend it outward. In this particular side, we're demonstrating both. There's a pre-maxillary anterior bend that I'm doing and a posterior bend outward to make the tray fit the existing dentate arch. Once we have bent the tray, we then immediately put it into cool water. Make sure it's completely cold before you put it back into the patient's mouth. Generally, one of the small, medium, or large will fit most dental arches. In this case, you can see specifically where I have bent the tray outward to accommodate for a second molar. In this case, the tray didn't completely seat, and it was only because it needed to be bent slightly outward. Once it was bent outward, I then placed it back into cold water, it re-solidified, and then retried it in the mouth. Once the tray is shaped for the mouth, then we must apply some adhesive into the tooth channel area and on the palatal surface. Once this has been done, then we take a rigid polyvinyl siloxane material we put a ribbon of material all around the tooth channel and then we fill up the palatal area. We now slowly place this in the patient's mouth making sure there's enough space between both the buccal, labial, and lingual surfaces of the teeth. We have now removed it from the mouth and as you will see there are tooth indentations and axial walls. Analyze this and then trim Trim this area so that there is no axial height to the indentation, but only stops. We are now going to be placing adhesive around the borders. The next step, of course, will be border molding. It is important that you place the adhesive around the borders and in the post-palatal zone. Now I'm applying a rigid viscosity polyvinyl siloxane and preparing to border mode. I now place this in the patient's mouth and follow the protocol of border molding. Number one, the anterior frenum. Number two, I have the patient pooch and then smile to get the vestibular sulcus area both anterior and posterior. I then take my finger and thumb, pull the cheek out and down. Thirdly, I have the patient open very wide to delineate the post-zygomatic space, and then have the patient breathe in real deep, occlude the nostrils, and have the patient forcibly cough, and this generally will get the post-palatal zone. Now you can analyze the tray. Look at all the borders of the impression. Analyze these borders, and then trim approximately a millimeter off prior to doing the wash procedure. Make sure you remove any unnecessary material which could inhibit removal of the tray during the wash. Inspect the tray for any burn areas that could come through. In this slide you're seeing burn areas that came through the impression. Now why wouldn't you leave these here? 
Everything looks fine. The borders still look fine. Will this really affect the borders? Not necessarily affect the borders, but will affect the border molding. If it affects the border molding, then you cannot produce the proper vestibular border. So it is recommended that you take a burr and relieve this so that at the time you do your wash, it's extremely simple to go back in, repeat the border molding, and then the face doesn't get caught up by hitting the tray in any particular area that protrudes out. You see here, I'm taking a, an E-cutter type burr. These trim the trays very nicely and smoothly. Do not apply a lot of pressure, just basically even, even pressure. As seen here, I have now removed the excess tray material. I have also removed approximately a millimeter of the polyvinyl siloxane around the border in the retromyohyoid space in the postpalatal zone. And as you see, my stops have no axial angles. They are strictly stops. The next step will be to do the wash procedure. I'm going to apply some adhesive. It's important to apply adhesive generally to the tray in which you've trimmed or any areas that you feel you have a concern with. Now, for the borders, we recommend a light viscosity polyvinyl siloxane. This will go around the entire peripheral border and into the post palatal zone. Next, we want to now use an extra light viscosity. This extra light viscosity in this slide is being injected around the teeth, just like we'll do a crown and bridge case. It's important to understand extra light viscosities for immediate dentures are extremely important. If we use a viscosity that's any heavier, we could actually either move the tooth or possibly extract the tooth. This slide shows that I'm now putting the extra light viscosity in the channel, the tooth channel. So it's important to understand that the extra light viscosities will touch the teeth. The light viscosities will redevelop the border that you previously have done with your initial border molding. This will give you a nice refined impression. This is now placed in the mouth. The border molding is repeated. And now you can analyze the final wash. Look at the detail of the peripheral borders. Look at the hard and soft palate. Look at the tooth. The teeth have extreme amount of anatomy. Here's another angle that lets you take a look at the peripheral row the junction of the hard and soft palate and the integrity of the teeth. We're just going to look at different angles because I think this is extremely important to understand that retention on any immediate denture is the peripheral row, the hard soft palate junction. So if we have this amount of detail, even after we extract the teeth, we should have retention. Not necessarily stability because the teeth are extracted, but retention. And here's a close-up that shows the detail of both the teeth and the anterior frenum and the anterior vestibular borders. Here's another slide that gives you two different angles. The next thing we want to describe is the mandibular dentate patient. In this particular case, once again, we have three sizes of trays, small, medium, and large. We need to size this to make sure that the tray fits passively. In this case, we've sized the tray. It seems like maybe it may not go down completely, so we want to make sure that we check for any binding. If there's any binding, very simply, we can heat shape it. And in this case, we can take the micro torch, just like we did previously, and heat shape whatever area we fill binds. We Once again, you take the torch rapidly. Five to 10 seconds is all you need. You will see the material become more clear. As it becomes more clear, you know it's getting ready to soften. You can take your finger and thumb and bend it to the desired area until it fits. Once you've done that, you then put it in cool water and it will re-solidify. You can do any part of the tray that you feel needs to be adjusted in order to get it to fit properly. Don't overheat the tray. It could burn, it could flame up, um, and it could distort. In this area, what I'm showing is that the mandibular portion of this particular arch is wider. 
And why is that? Sometimes we see this on certain cases where the posterior will bind. So you can take the torch, you can heat it in the anterior segment rapidly, five to 10 seconds on one side, five to 10 seconds on the other side, the tray becomes clear, you then spread it out, put it back in water, and now you have a tray with a wider posterior area. And hopefully this will then completely clear and go into the patient's mouth very passively. Now, we're gonna put adhesive into the tooth channel, that dry, and then put a ribbon of the rigid polyvinyl siloxane, and this will become our stop. We now very carefully place it in. Once that sets up, we take it out and analyze the tooth indentations. As you see here, the tooth indentations have very large axial walls. This is very normal. Now take a bar parker or a burr, and I want you to trim this down to where you only have stops. In this particular slide, you're seeing that you just see the very incisal edges of the teeth and the occlusal tips of the teeth. This makes a very nice tray that will help guide you back into the same position. Now, to do our borders, once again, we must use adhesive on these trays completely around the border. Once this dries, then we do our border molding procedure. In this case, I'm showing that we put adhesive. Now we put the polyvinyl siloxane around all the borders. And now we're going to insert this in the patient's mouth and perform border molding procedures. The border molding procedures on the lower is, is very much like the upper with several exceptions. We're going to place the tray. We're going to have the patient move their tongue out, up, left, right. This journey will take care of the malohyoid and the retromalohyoid space. Then we're going to have the patient pooch and smile. This takes care of the anterior vestibular sulcus. We'll then hold the tray in the mouth, take our finger and thumb and move the lip upward, both left and right and anteriorly. This generally gets the external oblique ridge and the anterior frenum. Then we'll let it set. As you see here, this is a border molded area. However, it looks like there's too much material. This is common. Now it's time to trim the excess material off prior to doing the wash. This becomes your custom tray. As seen here, I have now trimmed approximately a millimeter off of the vestibular border all the way from the retromolar pad around to the retromolar pad. I've removed any burn spots on the tray that could have burnt through. And I make sure that there are no axial heights of the stops. This is the absolute custom tray. Now I place adhesive in any area of exposed tray or any area that I'm concerned that the material may not stick, specifically on the lingual side of the lower. Now we're going to border mode. Once again, just like the upper, we're going to place a light viscosity PVS around all of the peripheral border and into the retromolar pad area. And then in the tooth channel, we're going to put the extra light viscosity. Now that's important, extra light viscosity. Now we're going to syringe extra light viscosity around all of the mandibular teeth and then place the tray in and repeat our border molding procedure. As you see here, we have the impression just being taken out of the mouth. We'll take a closer look and we'll inspect the borders and how the teeth look. Here you can see the definition of the vestibular border, both labially and buccally, and look how thin it is on the lingual side. This is very, very common. Generally, the retromalohyde space and the malohyde space becomes very narrow in this particular area. Here's two other views. Note the integrity of the teeth and the integrity of the vestibular border. If this was a partial denture case or an immediate denture case, the only thing we really have after we've extracted the teeth is the vestibular border. And this is extremely important so that we have a very nice fit. This slide here basically will show you step one, two, three, and four. You have the tray, you size it, you heat shape it as necessary, you put in your stops, you trim the stops, you put in your adhesive, now you do your border molding and then you do your wash. 
You can put this up on your wall in your operatories and your dental assistants and you can review this prior to any time you want to make an impression. This shows both the maxillary and mandibular dentate impressions utilizing the dentplant tray. Thank you.